Today I'm making a Metcalf Models cardboard construction kit, which will go on my circular layout. First of all, like any project, I'm giving the instructions a thorough read. They are very well written, but it's important to read the preamble before going on to the diagrams. Getting down to work, I'm releasing the die cut sections, cutting along the score lines as instructed, the ones with the blue arrows. A little cut along the edge helps the components pop out, but some may need a little bit of cleaning up. Once the components are released from the cardboard sheet, any windows can be popped out. Before we rush into construction itself, we need to sort out the glazing for the windows. These come on a sheet of clear plastic and need to be trimmed to the outside line. This outside area has been designed specially for each window, so don't be tempted to cut any closer. Once trimmed, offer up to the inside face, noticing that the print is on the front of the glazing unit. I can now apply the glue. I'm using Rocket Card glue, which I find works equally well for the plastic of the glazing. Spreading carefully with a bit of off cut and then positioning the glazing unit. Remembering that it's the print side out. Then you can flip it over and just make sure it's stuck properly. It's important to get the right doors for the right openings. Fortunately, they're clearly labeled and have the same color coding as the inner walls. When we're happy for positioning, we can go on and glue in the same way as the windows. Once all windows and doors of each inner wall are in position, that could be set aside before going on to the next one. Following the same procedure of applying the glue, spreading it thinly so it doesn't squish out when the glazing is put in place and pressed firmly home. The next section is purely optional, to install the curtains from the sheet supplied. But personally, I think it's worth it. This sheet is thinner paper, not die cut, so you'll have to cut out the curtains with a scalpel. The method is clearly described in the instructions. It is really very straightforward. It involves gluing a spare piece of card from around the components in the sheet. I like to use a long narrow piece, which when stuck to the curtain tab, I can trim to length. You get a wide range of colours on the curtain sheet, but I prefer to use a limited palette, and I'm going to use the same colour for the main window and the dormers. With a little bit of glue spread along the spacer, I can fit the curtain from inside the building, so I can see exactly how much is showing through the window. However, it's important not to go beyond the glazing, as this will interfere with some of the fit later on. For the dormers, I only need half of the length of the curtains, so I can just snip those in half, before fitting in exactly the same way. In this cottage kit, pairs of windows are very close together, so the curtains will need to share a single spacer and overlap behind, although the side curtains can be fitted exactly as usual. So even without any interior detailing, curtains just give that little sense that there's somebody at home. As you've seen, there's quite a lot of pre-preparation with windows and curtains, but we now get to the main build itself. As before, the components are released by cutting along the score lines, the ones with the blue arrows, and helping out any bits that get stuck with the tip of the scalpel. As we get into construction proper, we'll need to make constant reference to the instruction, always reading ahead so we know what's coming up. As well as the printed sheets, we have a plain sheet of slightly thicker cardboard with die cut pieces, which are the strengtheners and spacers we're going to need. The first of which is the base of the building. With a bead of glue around the edge, we can start forming the walls, making sure the base is flush to the bottom of the walls. It's important not to get ahead of yourself, gluing further than the instructions tell you. There is always method in the Metcalf madness. You can see I glued a bit of the side wall on the left hand side too early, but I caught it in time before the glue dried. The plain cardboard strengtheners are not labelled on the sheet itself, so you have to refer to the instructions to work out which is which and where they go. This is the strengthener for the chimney wall and would also support the ceiling. 
it just glues in, making sure it's flush with the floor. It's so satisfying when a cardboard model starts to take shape, going from flat cardboard to a three-dimensional object. And this is particularly true with Metcalf models, with their carefully thought out, multi-layered walls, giving literally an extra dimension. Equally satisfying is the precision of the Metcalf kits, both in the design and in the die cutting. So if you've done it right, everything fits perfectly. After dry runs, to make sure we know exactly where they're going, the two inner walls can be glued into place. With the side walls in, we can head back to our strengtheners sheet, finding the arched piece for the back wall, which can be glued into place, and the two side flaps folded in so they meet perfectly. We now come to the slightly fiddly ceiling, which we need to find on our strengtheners sheet, before gluing it in on top of the inner strengtheners. To avoid getting glue everywhere, I find applying beads to the inner walls and gluing along the edges of the ceiling works best. With the ceiling in place, I'm turning my attention to the upper story, starting with the inner wall with the dormer windows. To give myself something to hold on to on the inner wall, I'm gluing the inside of the chimney piece before carefully putting it into place, making sure the tops of the dormers are all lined up. For the chimney itself, we already have two layers of card to which we need to add the two spacers from the unprinted sheet. They need to be carefully sandwiched together before attaching to the inside of the inner wall. Making absolutely sure that the four layers are perfectly aligned and the outer skin will fit correctly. Finding the chimney stack amongst the other components, we can release the piece in the same way as usual. This is a fairly standard Metcalf way of doing chimneys, but if you haven't done one before, it's worth doing a dry run to understand exactly how they work before getting the glue out. The accuracy of the model pretty much means that if you get the top right, the bottom will be in the right place too. Flipping the cottage onto its back, we can glue, fold and stick down the back of the chimney, ensuring the two sides butt up with each other perfectly. With the walls of the main part of the cottage complete, we turn our attention to the gable end, releasing the inner wall as usual. We will also need a strengthener for the roof from our unprinted cardboard sheet. This lines up with the apex of the walls on the main cottage, but make sure it is absolutely straight. By now we're quite used to the process of assembling the inner walls, adding the doors and the windows, but don't get complacent and make sure you read the instructions as you go, as sometimes there's an unexpected twist and something has to be done before the next stage of the assembly. But in this case, there is nothing unexpected and we can complete the two inner walls with curtained windows and put to one side for later. The outer walls of the gable end hold no surprises either being released by cutting along the score line as usual. But have a good look at the assembly instructions before starting to glue. They suggest doing this all in one go, but I prefer to take my time and do one wall at a time. Applying glue along the edge of the side wall and around the bottom where two sides will join the base. I can now fit the side wall and the end wall, making sure I'm completely happy with the fit, leaving the third wall for later. When I'm ready, I can just fold that in and glue it in place. On the subject of glue, I'm a big fan of rocket guard glue, which is good for all parts of the construction and dries pretty quickly. I tend not to bother with the precision applicator nozzle, which gets clogged up too easily, preferring to use the standard nozzle and spreading the glue with a piece of scrap card. But always, before gluing, it's good to make a dry run to see if any areas really shouldn't have any glue on, like the white areas around the window and door. For the inner walls, if you stick to the coloured areas, you'll be fine. 
but don't use too much glue or it'll squeeze out from those window frames. And that is the walls of the cottage largely complete. At this point I thought we would go on to install the main roof of the cottage. But that all important re-look at the instructions shows us slightly counterintuitively installing the gable roof first. The reasons for which soon become evident. As well as applying glue to the tops of the walls, we need some along the ends of the roof, where the gable roof butts to the walls of the main cottage, which also explains why we did the gable roof first. Now we come to the main roof, releasing it from the car in the usual way. As with the gable roof, I'm applying glue along the tops of the walls. This is going to take a little while, so I need to make sure I've got enough glue so that it hasn't all dried out by the time I get the roof on. Just make sure any dribbles go down inside the walls rather than outside. Then just a bead of glue along the edges where the two roofs will join and either side of the dormers. Finally, refresh some of the areas where the glue has dried a bit before putting the roof on itself. That will then require a bit of pushing and pulling and adjusting until it's sitting perfectly on the tops of the walls and the join with the gable roof is a good one. We now come to the finishing touches, starting with the chimney coping stones, essentially two rectangles that sit on top of each other on top of the chimney. Just make sure that they're squarely aligned with an even distance around. And then glue the small one on top. We now come to the two small dormer roofs. And these were the only two bits I had trouble releasing from the cardboard. Eventually having to flip over the sheet to finish the job with a sharp knife. Thankfully, fitting them was much more straightforward. A nice innovation from Metcalf has been the addition of laser cut details. In the case of our cottage, timbered eaves. These aren't always easy to release from the board and I had to do quite a lot of scalpel work before I got all of them out. Each comprises of three pieces, the more ornate one being sandwiched between the two chevrons. I'm spreading the glue along the sides of each piece, using an off cut of the card, but equally now would be a good time for that precision applicator. One of the chevrons goes on top of the ornate piece, ensuring the tops are even and wiping away any glue with a thumbnail. The second chevron goes on the other side in exactly the same way. This process is then repeated two more times until you have three units. Before sticking down, make sure you have them the right way round. There is a little bit more detail on the outer face of the central section, where the timbers join. Once the glue has been spread, triangular unit can be positioned up under the eaves and gently pushed home against the wall. Exactly the same process needs to be followed. The other end of the main part of the cottage and the gable end. Lining up carefully before pushing back against the wall. Around the front of the cottage, the two dormer windows have their own simplified timbers, again made of a sandwich of three pieces of laser cut card, with a slightly larger chevron for the outside. Nearing the end of the build, we're going to add the ridge tiles. Each Metcalf kit offers a choice of slate or terracotta, which come on a pre-cut sheet. So all you have to do is cut them to length, fold along the pre-scored crease, and finally glue into place. Don't forget the dormers, which will need a short piece, just cut to a triangle at the end. The final, final finishing touch will be the chimney pots. These come on the curtains sheet, or in some Metcalf models, on the instructions themselves. 
Once cut out, it can be rolled and shaped around a skewer or similar before sliding off, ready to put in place. And stuck down with a blob of glue on the underside. I've deliberately made two slightly different height pots to add a little irregularity, which I also want to have in the positioning of the building itself, which will eventually get the full scenic treatment, but that's for another video.